Well, I hope you guys enjoyed open week. <laughs> I did. Uh, no, seriously, open week was good. Uh, you know, when we started the season and I looked at this uh, open week game, open week, really only playing once in three weeks, I, I didn't know how I'd feel about it. I think it's probably going to work out for the better now. It's given us a chance to work on a lot of different things to get a little bit healthier, a little bit uh, of rest physically and emotionally and mentally and to try to fix as many things as we could fix uh, within the uh, structure of things. Uh, I think it'll be good to have another open week to have a little more time to, to try to work on some things and get some more guys healthy. Um, Conference play is always a little bit different, a little bit of a change, a little more heightened intensity. Uh, somehow the computer spits us out to get to play Lafayette every year. I don't know how that happens. I thought these computers had a variance to them. Didn't you? Yeah. So we get to open there. That's been a tough opener for us. They've been, they've been the class of the league really for the last four or five years. and. Mark's done a great job there, Coach Hudspeth, and uh, you know they've they've had good players. Uh, they've played well, they've coached well, uh, got good fan support. Tough place to go play. Uh, they're off to a similar start to last year, uh, and they promptly after last year, after starting one and three, I think they won seven in a row and then lost the last one. Uh, so uh, I think that's right. I know they won seven out of eight. <clears throat> They've got a good, on offense, good offensive line, good running back in McGuire, and uh, good, uh, good receivers. Uh, obviously, they're rotating quarterbacks, trying to settle on one. Both of them are talented. Uh, but they just haven't, I think they tried to settle on Nixon maybe last week. and. Uh, I'm not sure where they're at right with that right now. He may give them more options running and throwing. Uh, maybe th at least they may think that. Uh, both are capable. We played against the other young man some last year and the year before, and he's, he's got ability. Uh, we know that. Defensively, they're big. Uh, got good speed in the secondary. Um, good athletes. Uh, their size up front has given us problems in the past. And really, as I said the other day, we haven't been much of a challenge to them the first two years. So uh, hopefully we will play them better. Size offensively and defensively both? Both. Yeah. Brent, from what you've seen in practice so far, can you tell any difference in the defense or will that be something that won't really be able to get it until we see them in the game. Well, you know, I, there's a difference. I hope it shows up on game day to a degree. Uh, there's limitations to how what you can do, but uh, from um, I think discipline, accountability, from maybe eliminating some of the gray in the defense and uh, making some changes with personnel and people in different spots. Um, we hope that, you know, we've, we've worked hard at trying to orchestrate change, so we hope that it shows up to a degree. Uh, <clears throat> I, I still continue to believe we're better on defense than we've played for whatever reason, and uh, I think our players believe that. And uh, so I hope, I hope the production is better. I think it can be. Um, you know, getting healthy is a big help for us. I believe uh, after the last couple of years that you guys have played Louisiana Lafayette, you've said something to the effect that, you know, the results made it look like the two teams weren't even in the same class. Do you feel like the programs are on a little bit more equal footing this year? I think we're closer, yeah, I do. I think our uh, watching the film, I, th I think we feel that way. Um, you know, that doesn't I mean the score is going to turn out that way sometimes, but uh, 
Yeah, I do think we're. You know, I think the Arkansas State win last year, and uh, who, who's also been one of those teams there, uh, you know, kind of showed we were closing the gap. But uh, we just haven't closed it against Lafayette head to head. Well, you prepare for both. I, I think um, you understand what they're going to try to do with each one of them best you can. And, and their changes are not massive or big from one to the other, but they will change uh, a little bit. Um, I think the biggest thing we've got to do is, is try to get ready to take on the offensive line, the size of them, and the running back. Um, you know, I think their running game is probably going to make their quarterback a better player, um, make them more comfortable. And if we don't find a way to get some stops with that, then the quarterback will play fine on Saturday, I think. Four. We, uh, we left three defensive of our top four defensive tackles. We left three at home. And the fourth one got hurt on the 11th play. Um, DeAndre Elvoy, Landon Beck, uh, Rashad Dillon, and Dallas McClarty. Well, I think part of our problem in the Houston game, you know, we had been, we've been pretty good at taking care of the ball. We turned it over um, the other night, and, you know, we can't press. We got, we, <clears throat> I think when, uh, that should have been 35-21 maybe at halftime. I mean, we could find a lot of different scores in there, but, but, the defense's inability to get a stop, I think, wore on the offense a little bit, and I think some of them pressed a little bit, and they can't do that. They just got to play their game, you know, and uh, take care of the football. And, you know, if we don't have Lawrence's fumble and CJ's fumble, you'd like to think we get touchdowns there, at least field goals, and, and uh, you know, maybe we don't throw the pick six, and you get to the locker room, it's a different, different halftime. But we let it get away from us when we didn't take care of the football and we, and we give them a score on offense. And, you know, Tyler probably pressed a little bit. And, but he wasn't the only one. A lot of them do. How about defensively? Do you say change philosophy much? John was pretty much an attacking style. Well, John was, but when he got into the season, he – I think he stopped being that way. He, you know, he he got a little conservative. I think on game day sometimes, and uh, you know, when I went against John, he wasn't that way. But I think for whatever reason, he got a little bit that way. So I, I don't. That wasn't your something you guys talked about. No, I didn't. You know, his plan was to be aggressive going into the season, and he. In the first game against Florida State, he said, we're going to kind of play soft and keep it in front of us. And I thought, wow, this is a little different thought process for the, than we've been working on. But OK, that's what our plan is. So uh, so I, I think we'll, we'll hope to be a little more up-tempo. And, and uh, key is to look like it, <laughs> you know, to make some plays like it. I think so. Coach, how is the drive's message different from Coach Thompson's message? What is he preaching to the defense that Thompson did? He is going to hold him accountable. He's going to have discipline. He's going to have, he likes things black or white. A lot of defensive coaches are a little more gray out there sometimes. Um, offensive coaches tend to be black, white, got to do this, got to block. Uh, defensive coaches, you know, the great thing about defense, one guy goes the right way and ten go the wrong way, and if one guy makes a good play, you, everybody looks smart. On offense, one guy goes the wrong way, and all 11 look bad sometimes. 
So there, there's, it's just two different, it's dogs and cats. Uh, you know, and uh, so I think Brad, Brad will be a little more, uh, we're going to do it this way, we're going to line right, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to know our assignments better. We're going to we're going to uh, understand why we're doing what we're doing better. Uh, I think all his approaches with that and his energy and uh, everything has been been good for us. Who stood out in his defense that as well as stand out in the offense? Say that again. Who stood out? Who stand out for Brad instead of other? Not necessarily stand out for Tom and practice. Well, I think the biggest thing maybe that uh, I've seen in practice is uh, our secondary, I think, is kind of a little more clearly defined in what they're doing and has, uh, I think, played more aggressively the last several days. Coach, when the change happened, what was your message to the team? Just like when you have an injury, you close ranks, you march on. We have capable people. Uh, you know, I almost hired Brad when I hired John. Um, I don't, I, you know, I, I thought the players would um, be a little more uneasy or uh, we just kept going. Nothing, uh, they wanted to get better and I think they liked what Brad's given them. And uh, so I was prepared for it to be a little bit more bumpy than it was, but it really wasn't. And uh, they want to play better. They want to plan to play better, and they want to they want to do better. And they they like what Brad's given them, I think. And so that's that's been pretty good. And um, the guys have accepted the change, and they they knew things had to change. And so uh, it's really gone pretty smooth. Were there gray areas on which every play? Were there what? Gray areas on which every play in defense. And did you feel like that was maybe one of the reasons, one of the bigger reasons for the defensive struggles to start the year out? Well, I don't know if there was a gray area on every play, but I think there were there was enough things happening that were a little vague. And then with the speed of the no huddle, and now I got to get lined up. I got to go fast, and now I, I'm a little unsure. And um, I think, you know, one of the things I um, talked to John about was getting these calls in sooner. You know, uh, you got to be ready to to roll like they are. You you know, defense doesn't dictate tempo; they react to tempo. And um, in the Southern Miss game, I thought John was a little slow a few times and so all of a sudden we're getting the call late we're lining it we're now we're having to recognize the formation make our communications and the ball's getting snapped and that and that's what up tempo offenses do to people we've done it to people and that's what happens sometimes you know sometimes uh, I, I always say um, be careful what you ask for you might get it well sometimes on offense we do that to people and they line up crazy and but they're standing where they're going to make the play instead of letting them get lined up and knowing where they're going to be and blocking them Kind of works both ways sometimes, but I, you know, our guys needed to get the call to get lined up, and then they have a chance to play. And, that, and some of those times, not the whole game, but you know, there were times that wasn't happening. And and I, I just think Brad's what he's done is is put things into a, a message that's more concise and. Um, sharper to them that it's this way, it's not this way. So instead of this, this is what we want. And then he's held them accountable to do that. Do you see even in practice that they're playing a lot faster, that they're not thinking as much about what, what their, their assignments are doing, they're reacting more? Yeah, I th I've seen that. I think we're going to see it more and more. You know, we've just been through four or five practices like this. Uh, but it, <clears throat> I think it's, you know, we haven't done so much that, you know, they're not, if we've trained a guy to do certain things for 45 practices or whatever, you can't untrain him. You've got you to take what you've trained him to do and then add a little bit or pull a little bit and 
molded into the, the things that you do. If you teach concepts, uh, then you can take a concept and plug it into a bigger picture. I'll give you an, an example. Uh, we have different protections and we have different routes. Well, when we make a game plan, we will plug the protection in with the route. So, you know, if the protection is a car, say a Ford, and the route is mesh, we could go Ford mesh or whatever it may be. Or we could go Chevy mesh if we want to protect. Some protections are five man protections, some are six man protections, some are seven man protections. So the quarterback has to know, you know, which protection he's in from the standpoint of who his protectors are. And the receivers plug the routes in, and so you, you know, you can, you learn their concepts, now you can put them together. We were, with John, we weren't a very, we weren't very much of a concept teaching. We were more of a memory teaching, which is fine. I mean, it doesn't have to, to be the other way. But conceptual teaching, which I think Brad's turned a little bit more to, gives you an opportunity to, to be multiple and plug things together. So that's, that's part of what we've tried to do. We changed our tackling techniques a little bit uh, and things like that. Well, I mean, it doesn't take a brain surgeon. No, we can't be very happy with the way we're playing. So, yes, but, I mean. No, I tried to talk him out of it. I didn't think. When, uh, when the change was announced to us, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was announced that he was that Brad was taking over as the interim defensive coordinator. Is there an expectation that he is coaching with the intention to be the permanent defensive coordinator? Hey, we're all day to day. We're all migrant workers. We're just <laughs> we're just coaching today and coaching this week, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, if it goes well, he can yeah he can become the permanent. Um, you know, I think anytime you're in this situation, if the guy next man up moves up and does well, you're you're going to think about doing that. Um, since I know him pretty well, you know. Um, that really doesn't have much to do with this because dinner around the table is a lot better if we're doing well. So, you know, It'd be pretty hard I don't want to sit and have dinner with him and be mad at him because he's playing bad. You know, so, I mean, there, you know, you earn, you, earn your, you earn your spot. You know, you earn your spot. And, and um, he's excited for the opportunity. You know, I labored long over the decision uh, when I hired John. And... Um, you know, I give the entire staff input and thoughts, and um, we made a kind of a group decision, but Brad was right there. I mean, we almost hired him then. You know, he's been a defensive coach for a long time, 